Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for staying. Uh, I'll be very quick so you can go soon and grab a beer or coffee. So once again, I'm Conrad from the NIR Foundation. I run BD and blockchain success uh, for NIR ecosystem. So uh, I was asked to deliver a talk about self-sovereignty and I think Lily from the Solana Foundation had uh, already touched upon this point. Uh, so maybe I will start with the bad news. Uh, today, uh, I must say there is no self-sovereignty. The web is closed. Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, and all these, uh, crypt uh, not crypto, but uh, web2 billionaires are making shit ton of money out of your data that you're feeding them through your smartphones and computers. And this is why there's so much inequality in today's world, right? Because you, as the owner of this data, um, you cannot capture the economic benefit of the internet. So what's the business model for the internet? So it's attention, and they're selling you ads on the back of your data, right? So it's all about attention, profit, and greed. But uh, this will get worse because AI is coming, and if you look at who owns the AI, it's all the same guys that own the data, right? So, sorry, but OpenAI is very close to Microsoft, so I think it will be very tough to change this paradigm and achieve self-sovereignty. The good news is blockchain can solve this, right? So blockchain can be described as a value layer of the internet that can extract some of the economic value of this fantastic thing called internet and share it with the user or developer who's building the stuff and not only the centralized entity and the company that is building and owning the, the, the applications. So I will quickly tell about NIR because I think our origin story tells a lot about how we approach and the self sovereignty movement. So we started in 2018. There are two guys, Ilya and Alex, one Russian, one Ukrainian, who figure out, oh, we want to build an AI startup called NIR. Singularity is NIR. But then they figure out very quickly that it's very difficult to move money around to fund the uh, AI uh, research to pay the scientists, and also their initial concept was to build a crowdsource platform so they can um, pay money to all these people in emerging countries from Africa, Eastern Europe, Asia, to teach uh, and improve large language models. But they encountered this problem that it was very difficult to send them Bitcoin, it was very difficult to send them ETH, so they figured out we need to start our blockchain. So they built near blockchain. And they figure out that, okay, so we try to solve this AI problem, but maybe there's a bigger problem to solve, which is around the self-sovereignty and the open web, which is extracting the economic value from the internet, thanks to the blockchain, can help to achieve this self-sovereignty vision. So how do, how do I define this self-sovereignty? So it's all about giving people control over their data and assets. So instead of having your money in the bank, you self-custody in your wallet. Instead of uh, sharing your data through Facebook app, maybe there is a way to um, uh, ring fence it and you can give the access and uh, get some money out of it on the smart contract. So we started to think how we can really open the web and share this economic benefit uh, thanks to near blockchain. So we started as many of our uh, colleagues in the Crypto Valley as a layer one blockchain. Uh, we were one of the first blockchain that achieved sharding to scale uh, our proof of stake uh, blockchain. And uh, we uh, are very proud to say that we are one of the few blockchains that are able to handle millions of transactions and millions of, of user traffic every day. And then we figure out that it's not enough, right? Because there are like plenty of layer ones. Some of them you met uh, already during this conference, but maybe there's a way to merge all the blockchains together. So we started to work on the chain abstraction, which is a tech stack of technologies that will enable you to control from one 
account from one wallet, all the blockchains together. And then AI came last year with ChatGPT, and so we figured out, hold on, we have two best guys, two best founders in the AI space. One who wrote Attention is All You Need, that was the paper that started the transformers that power um, large language models, and the other who was one of the first scientists for OpenAI, and we figured that there is a natural synergy between blockchain and the AI to build this uh, full sovereign operating system uh, for the internet where the user and the community can own their data and can own ultimately uh, the AI. So I got asked very often how near is different than Ethereum or Solana, etc., etc. So I think if you just to simplify, I'm not an engineer, so you'll find plenty of buzzwords on this slide. But the way I personally think about it is that we have the best stuff of layer one that is monolithic, like, like Sonana, and the best things of a modular uh, blockchain like ETH. So to give you a couple of examples, thanks to our modular design, we are able to provide data availability and settlement execution, not only for the near blockchain, but also for some of our blockchains. So, for example, data availability. Storing data on near is hundreds times cheaper than on ETH. So we have a lot of layer tools like Arbitrum, Optimist that come to us uh, and they want to store the data from transactions on near. At the same time, we have the scalability of layer one which is the monolithic approach, where we have the sharding execution and, and settling done on one chain, right? And on top of it, we started to, find this, to, to define this middle circle, which we believe is the tech stack for the open web. Uh, plenty of buzzwords. I am personally the most uh, uh, excited about the chain abstraction one, which is all about merging all these layer ones, layer twos, etc., in one, right? So um, if you go to near the dark and uh, find chain signatures, you'll find that we built a tech stack that enables developers to build the application, where from one wallet, they're able to control and uh, send transactions on multiple uh, blockchains. ETH, uh, Optimism, Polygon, Bitcoin, etc. you can do it all from the near uh, account. And we built all this cool uh, tech stack for blockchain, but we need people to use it, right? And we need dApps to use it. So we, since the beginning, as I mentioned during the panel, we're super focused on building a decentralized ecosystem so that developers, community can build really cool applications. And uh, I'm very proud to say that over the past few years, since the beginning, we have uh, scouted one of the best teams in Web3 that have uh, the largest uh, applications in Web3. I will give you a couple of examples. You can go to Dapradar and check them out. Uh, Sweat is the walk to earn application that has 1.5 million uh, monthly active users. Another cool project called Hot, which is a Telegram wallet uh, with a launchpad and uh, DEX capabilities. Uh, six million plus users and it was the fastest growing app that uh, in the history of Web3. Another cool project is Cosmos AI, which is a lock screen product um, out of Asia, now available in Asia and the Americas and in a few countries of Europe where uh, people can get the recommendations what to shop on their lock screen and get rewarded for data sharing in crypto called Kaiching. And finally, uh, our gaming uh, um, project called Play Amber, which is casual games uh, with the cryptonomics tokenization models. So now all these projects and some other projects generate 250 million transactions plus a month, which proves that we achieved on our vision of building a scalable blockchain. And you know, just to give you a couple of stats, 2 million uh, daily active users on NIR. NIR currently is the most used blockchain, bigger than Solana, bigger than Polygon, etc. And uh, we are super proud that uh, these people are super sticky, right? So they still sit within the apps. They don't come for a quick trade, some airdrop, DeFi stuff, and they disappear and they move to other chain. 
So just to sum up, near number one in active addresses, 12.4 million. Number one in transaction fees, less than uh, 0.006 cents. Number one in retention, so all our people that are using our dApps, they stay within these platforms. And finally, uh, we are improving also on our transaction per second uh, speed and, uh, and the number of transactions. So the goal is to be number one soon. Um, so, okay, so we have this fantastic near blockchain, which is the economic value of the internet that enables to merge different blockchains and use it from one account. But what about this whole AI thing and how it's going to impact the self sovereignty? So, AI is near. Okay, and coming soon. So, Dominic from Definity. He had uh, showed us uh, their roadmap, their technology. They've built some cool things. We are also investing heavily in AI. And this is uh, the framework that we're using to work around our Web3 AI stack. So there is a data layer of AI that uh, we really want to have it decentralized. There's the infra layer, and there's the apps layer. So what we're going to attack heavily and we've started doing it um, over the past few months, is the data and infra layer. And this is our strategy. So we're launching near.ai. So it's our R&D arm that is going to be led by Alex Kidanov and Ilya to build cool Web3 AI tech stack. We're going to launch a couple of AI tokens from our, within ecos from our ecosystem. The first one will be Cosmos AI, which is the Kai Ching app. Another one really cool is called Minbase. Check these uh, projects out on the internet. Then we're starting an incubator to incubate more of these ecosystem projects coming to us, great founders. And we're going to build a community around them. And finally, near license. So near license is it's still the ideation phase, how to use near tokens to have access to, access to all this tech stack of our ecosystem, but also built by Ilya and Alex. Uh, to, to use for different applications. So, speaking of uh, our roadmap, so the first product that we're going to launch is called Near AI Developer. I'm really not sure if I'm allowed to uh, share the slide or I'm sharing cell alpha, but okay, let, that's too late. So, Near AI Developer, it's a tool where people like me who know nothing about coding will be able to build dApps and smart contract, co contracts. Then we will have Near AI Researcher, uh, which will be the ideation hub to build new AI stuff uh, on, on the blockchain. And finally, our ultimate vision, will, will, which will require heavy R&D investment, is building our own uh, AGI. And speaking about the incubation, so I think next week we are announcing the projects and teams that got qualified for our incubator program, five fantastic teams, all of them PhDs in AI science, a lot of them from San Francisco Valley, super nerdy, super smart people that are going to build great stuff on the near for AI. And um, we already have some cool uh, ecosystem projects that are showing what can be uh, built within the intersection of AI and Web3. One is Jutsu. So Jutsu is our ecosystem project that enables developers that are building smart contracts to build it faster on the back of AI. And the, um, the other one is called Minbase. And Minbase built a really cool wallet that you type a prompt, hey wallet, buy me two bitcoins, hey wallet, buy me this NFTs. And uh, this will do it for you, so you don't have to like nerd out, log into your wallet, go to this NFT marketplace and do the transactions yourself. So more stuff is coming. Thank you for listening to me. If you want to stay in touch, this is my Twitter handle, Swiss Hustler, and uh, my email, okay? So you can shoot me an email. And I'm around, so feel free to, 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 to ask me any questions. A big round of applause for Conrad, especially because he stepped in with a half-day notice. <laughs>